as exciting as it is to hear Captain Kirk tell Mr. Sulu to take them to Warp Factor 5 in the Star Trek universe. Once we leave science fiction and return to our own reality, we face serious physical barriers. Exceeding the speed of light is not just a technical issue. It brings problems like violations of causality, unresolved mathematical complexities, and most importantly, the need for negative energy, which has not even been proven to exist, but now. We are talking about a development that could change this entire picture scientists may have developed a model that can create a warp effect without needing negative energy. Yes, using only regular positive energy. And to give an extreme example, even the kind of fuel that powers your car, engine reaching or surpassing the speed of light, has been a long-standing dream, especially for fans of science fiction at the heart of that dream. Our journeys across the galaxy, here's the thing. The idea of intergalactic travel demands that we get close to a speed so great it almost feels forbidden, but Einstein was clear, crystal clear to reach the speed of light. An object would need infinite energy, and no, infinite is not just a figure of speech. The math says it. The numbers say it. Reality says it. that's why. For decades, warp drives remained a fantasy, a theory, a dream, but now, we may be at the edge of something new, a warp model, powered not by exotic, negative energy, but by something we already know. Positive energy, the kind of energy that fuels your car, that lights up your home, if this works. It won't just be science. It will be history now. Let's look at why reaching the speed of light is such an impossible goal picture of spacecraft. As it reaches 90% of light speed, its energy demand explodes, its mass grows. Exponentially, more speed means more mass, means more energy at 99.9%. You need 22 times its rest mass in energy, push it to 99.99%, and you're beyond the total energy Earth produces in a year. Even today's strongest particle accelerators barely manage to push tiny, nearly massless protons to these speeds. And even then, it takes massive energy. This isn't science fiction. This is a hard truth. One of the deepest laws of our universe without infinite energy. Nothing can reach the speed of light, though. If we truly want to exceed the speed of light, we'll need more than just stronger engines. We'll need something else. Something far more creative. A way to bend the rules of physics themselves. And this is where warp drives come in instead of reaching light speed. They propose something radical. Bending space-time itself. To arrive at the destination, it's not about moving faster. It's about moving smarter warp drive. A concept born from Einstein's theory of general relativity is a theoretical engine that doesn't push a ship through space, but pulls space around the ship in this system. A spacecraft could travel faster than light. By warping the space-time, it sits in, and here's the key. It never actually exceeds the speed of light. Locally, the phrase, carries itself to the destination, is critical here, because it's not the ship that moves. It's space-time that moves around the ship. A warp drive works by contracting space in front of the vessel and expanding space behind it between these two forces. The ship sits inside what's called a warp bubble, a region where space-time remains flat and stable the ship itself does not accelerate. Instead, space moves, and the ship simply rides the current. The most well-known model of this concept is the Alcubierre warp drive proposed in 1994 by Mexican physicist Miguel Alcubierre. So, what does it really mean to bend space to make this idea more tangible? Let's break it down using a simplified example on a two-dimensional plane. Imagine this. The Parker Solar Probe is located at point A. The SOHO spacecraft is directly across from it at point B. Both are positioned right next to the Sun. The Sun's diameter is about 1.4 million kilometers. As long as the Sun is there, its massive gravity bends space-time. And because of that curvature, the distance between points A and B is also 1.4 million kilometers, but now, imagine the sun suddenly disappears, its mass vanishes, and with it, its ability to warp space-time visually. Points A and B still appear to be in the same place, but the geometry of space has changed, and that means the distance between them has changed too. This is where the Schwarzschild metric comes in. Using this metric, physicists can calculate how space behaves near massive objects according to those calculations. If the sun were to disappear, 
The distance between Parker and Soho would no longer be 1.4 million kilometers, it would become 1,400,000 and 1.63 kilometers. Neither probe has moved. They haven't accelerated. They haven't been pushed, but with the sun's gravitational grip gone, space has relaxed, and it appears as if the probes gently drifted apart in reality. Each probe would seem to have moved about 800 meters. Without ever firing a single thruster, this gives us a real, measurable example of how space-time can stretch and return, and this is exactly how warp drives are theorized to work, not by moving faster through space, but by bending space itself. To shorten distances, not by changing time, but by reshaping space, not by speeding up, but by redefining what movement means this, is exactly what a warp drive is trying to do to change position, without accelerating, to reach a destination, without traveling no thrust, no velocity, just space. Folding around the ship, we can even think of it with a simple real-world analogy, picture an ant. It wants to walk across a carpet, from one edge to the other. But it's slow now, imagine you fold the carpet. The two ends touch, and the ant reaches its goal. Without walking the full distance, that's what a warp drive aims to do not to move the ship, but to fold space. To bring the destination closer, the ship itself can remain still, like the ant, but if space-time moves, it looks and behaves as if the ship is moving faster than light. So how is that even possible? A warp drive doesn't work like a conventional engine. It doesn't burn fuel. It doesn't shoot plasma. It doesn't push the ship forward instead. It uses a special form of energy. To bend the structure of space-time itself, put simply, it doesn't go to the destination. It pulls the destination toward itself, but there's a catch. It requires an extraordinary amount of energy. Einstein's equations of general relativity tell us that the shape of space-time depends on the distribution of matter and energy within it. So, if you want to bend space, you need to create a very specific energy field. In the region you want to bend, that's what a warp drive is based on. It manipulates the space in front of the ship, compressing it, and expands the space behind the ship. The ship stays inside a flat, stable zone. Between these two extremes, so in summary, the ship doesn't actually move. Space moves around the ship, and because of that, it doesn't technically exceed the speed of light, the travel time. Would likely depend on how efficiently the warp drive can operate in theory. You could reach a destination a million light years away in just 10 seconds, but in this case, you didn't break the light speed limit because space-time itself was pulled toward you so naturally. This question comes to mind, can space-time itself move faster than the speed of light? The answer is, yes, Einstein's general theory of relativity allows it the fabric of space-time can stretch faster than light. And we know this happened during the cosmic inflation period, right after the Big Bang, that expansion is the theoretical foundation behind faster-than-light travel. Without actually breaking the speed limit, that's exactly where warp drives come in, but then another question usually follows. And it's a good one if a warp-driven spacecraft stretches space-time by 3 billion light-years from the moon. Would Earth be affected? A fair question. But here's the key detail. A warp drive doesn't pull on the entire universe. It doesn't bend space-time everywhere instead. It creates a small, local bubble around the ship. Just big enough to contain its mass, this warp bubble only affects that immediate region of space-time. At least according to current theoretical models, of course. If we ever attempt this in practice, control and safety will be absolutely essential. That's why early warp trials are expected to begin far from Earth. Most likely after a ship reaches at least Mars using conventional propulsion. But still, one huge question remains, where will we get the energy? This is the biggest barrier between theory and reality ever since Miguel Alcubierre proposed the first warp drive model in 1994. Every concept has required one thing, negative energy, but what exactly is negative energy? Let's be clear. It's not energy as we know it. We don't even know if it truly exists. Theoretical physics allows it. Based on Einstein's equations and certain quantum phenomena, like the Casimir effect discovered in 1948, suggests it could exist on very small scales in the Casimir effect. Two metal plates in a vacuum experience a tiny force caused by a difference in quantum energy densities between the plates and their surroundings. This is called negative energy density, but here's the issue. These effects are tiny, nowhere near strong enough to bend space-time. We have no way to produce 
store or control negative energy in that is why warp drives have remained theoretical no negative energy no war bubble that was the rule until recently in 2024 a study published by jared fuchs and the team at the applied physics laboratory in new york may have changed everything unlike earlier concepts their model proposes a warp solution that satisfies all the known energy conditions Without using negative energy, let's break it down the team model the shell of matter. Surrounding the passenger area of the ship inside the shell, they introduced a shift vector, a concept from Alki Beyer's original design that causes the warp bubble to move. They then used a tool called the warp factory to simulate the geometry of space-time and test the energy requirements numerically. The result, the model satisfies NEC, WEC, SEC, and DEC. Those are the null, weak, strong, and dominant energy conditions in simple terms. It means no negative energy, no faster-than-light energy flow, no matter appearing from nothing, and what that means is huge for the first time. The phrase, warp drives are impossible without negative energy, is starting to fall apart, this model works, using only positive energy, the kind we already know and use now. There's a catch this version works at a constant speed. It's not faster than light, not yet, but it proves that a physically possible warp bubble can be created. That warps space-time over vast distances, even up to one million light years, and that may be the first real step toward near-light speed travel in the future still. The energy problem hasn't gone away, sure. We don't need negative energy anymore, but the shell required to create the warp bubble has a mass equal to 2.4 times that of Jupiter. That's several septillion kilograms, just for a tiny warp field, so yes. The energy is no longer exotic, but still enormous researchers say future models may optimize this design to make it more realistic either way. This paper marks a major milestone in warp drive history for the first time. A warp solution fully compatible with Einstein's equations and using only positive energy has been demonstrated it's still the beginning. The model is slow, sublight, and theoretical, but it's also the first scientifically valid simulation of a warp bubble, and that means the dream of warp travel has just taken a real step towards science, a new era. May have just begun, subscribe to our channel, and help us bring this science to more curious minds. See you in the next video.